Hi, Kat. Hey, Tiff. How are you? I'm so happy to be back. Oh my gosh, me too. Oh, it's just it feels so good to be back in front of the microphone. Right. How was the break? I need it all. I need the attention. I know. <laughs> From our massive amount of fans. Oh, um, huge. <laughs> huge. Hi, mom. Actually, I don't think my mom even listens. So, hi, twin sister. I don't know. I don't think my mom knows how to listen to I don't, a podcast. Yeah, I don't blame her. Yeah, mine neither. Yeah, break was good. I did a lot of things. <laughs> it's very specific. I went to North Carolina. That Ooh. was nice. Went to the uh, the beach. I'm actually 100% not a beach person, so. Uh, yeah. It was a family trip, though, so it was actually really fun to just have Charlie hang out with her cousins. and. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. It was adorable. We saw a double rainbow, and we have this video of Charlie just shouting, rainbow, <gasps> rainbow. <laughs> like that video. do you remember that video that came out the guy was like a double rainbow and he's like freaking out no but that was pretty Uh much what was happening and all the people from the house next door were like adults shouting that so (laughs) it's it's a thing it has an effect yeah i can see that how was your break it was good i went home to albuquerque for uh one of my really good friends we used to have a party every year called eating day which is exactly what it sounds like love it day devoted to eating and we hadn't done it in um since before the pandemic because his father had passed away so uh it was our first time back in five years and uh everybody had four-year-old children i don't know what happened but there were four-year-olds running around that weren't there before (laughs) so which was cool but we taught them about eating day the tradition continues so it was great oh that's adorable yeah you're like wait a minute you weren't here before yeah (laughs) Though, I never, you know, in my mind, they all were just born, so I don't know how they're walking and talking. So Right? Yeah. Probably know, time their, know how to read almost. I know. Oh, my God. Don't tell me that. I'm not ready. <laughs> but, uh, hey, welcome to season two of Greening Up My Act. Woo-woo! This season, we're talking about waste, which, you yes. know, that means we're going to get wasted with you. Ha, ha, ha. Just kidding. Uh, just kidding. Uh, it's uh. not about that kind of waste. So what are we doing this season, Tiffany? We are talking about lots of things. If you heard the teaser, uh, you'll know a little bit, but we're talking, we're going to start with recycling Mm -hmm. and talk about how, how do you describe it? How ridiculous it is? (laughs) I was was like, corrupt, uh, meaningless. uh, Meaningless. I mean, it's not. Yeah. We not all of it is. I think we need to narrow that down to plastic. Yeah. Other recycling is pretty, not well. Some of it's some of it's actually really good and interesting and and helpful and you know great for communities. And then plastic recycling is a a sham. I'm just gonna throw it out there. A sham. A hundred percent. That mm-hmm. is a great word to describe it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get into that, and I'm pumped for that episode. But um, yeah, because I had just been reading all these articles about recycling and how it's a broken system. And then we found some some things that you recycle are actually – it works relatively well. Not like yeah. it can't be improved, but – Right. Yeah. But it's really interesting process because, you know, if you think you just throw everything in that blue bin and it goes and it's fine, but that's not how it works. Mm-hmm. So – I was going to say after that, we're going to talk about other ways to dispose of waste that aren't your city municipal recycling program. Or your landfill. Or your landfill. Yeah. So beyond the, beyond the bin, I think that section, but we're calling this the first four episodes of this season, the four horsemen of the recycle apocalypse because of that sham factor. Um, I think really you and I have both done our research on aluminum and paper and they're probably not, they're not plagues really, but Glass and plastic. Plastic is definitely death. A hundred percent. And glass might be famine. I think that that's a appropriate. The other two are like my little ponies. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's like sparkle pony and paper pony. I don't know. Sorry. I didn't mean to remove. Sparkle is definitely aluminum though. <laughs> Shiny pony. Yeah. Shiny pony. <laughs> but yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. And then later in the season, we're going to talk about like uh, composting. We're going to try our hands at that. And although it's kind of, we should probably start now because it takes a while, but 
Yeah, well, like, there's a municipal recycling program in my city, so my my recycling program is putting it from the little thing on my countertop into the green bin outside where Austin very good. takes it away. And okay, yeah. I have that option too, but I have to drive it. And I'm not going to do that, so I'll just try it at home. Yeah, there you go. And then yeah, some reusable things that everybody seems to love, and we're going to explore them, like reusable stasher bags, like Ziploc bags, or reusable straws. Yeah. So how to reduce your use. Yeah. And then you're going to get into food waste, which is going to be really yeah. interesting. Yeah. Finding out ways to quit throwing all your food in the trash, America. Yeah. And exploring whether or not they actually, like these tactics or hacks or whatever actually work. Yeah. yeah. Because I'll be honest, I'm a big food waster and I'm not that proud of it. But I've been a lot better lately, so. Yeah, that's good. I'm I'm yeah. the same way. I have my eyes for vegetables are bigger than my stomach. And I it's like, look, broccoli. That's going to last for six months, right? And then, it, no. Why yes. broccoli doesn't generally last for six months. Maybe in the freezer, but not in your fridge. So. Right. Gross. <laughs> Grossies. Yeah, but do you want to just jump, dive into I'm recycling? I'm going to go right into Sparkle Pony. Sparkle, Sparkle Pony number one. Sparkle Pony. Aluminum recycling. Yep. Yeah. Well, should we talk about the recycling industry a little bit overall? Yeah. Give me dish a little because I know you've you've dug into it and I want to know. Yes. So this is something that I think surprises a lot of people because it surprised the hell out of me when I first learned about it. But basically, the recycling industry in general is kind of shady mm -hmm. because it was supported very much so by big industries like Coca-Cola, like I think some oil companies, because they wanted to be able to create disposable, like to veer away from glass bottles. You know, like your Coke used to come in glass bottles. Right, because it's expensive and they're delicate. They yes. break. Yep. And they were responsible for taking them back and cleaning them, and that was expensive, and they didn't want to have to deal with it. So they sort of jumped on the recycling bandwagon. This is specifically for plastic, but I think it kind of, you know, Other seeps into the rest too. of it. Yeah. And yeah, they basically had lots of ads. Like I found this NPR article that pulled out this ad that said, the bottle may look empty, yet it's anything but trash. And it's this ad from the 1990s. It says, it's full of potential. We've pioneered the country's largest, most comprehensive plastic recycling program to help plastic fill, fill valuable uses and roles. Hmm. But the whole time, they, the same article quoted another former president of the Society of Plastics Industry saying that if the public thinks that recycling is working, then they're not going to be as concerned about the environment because they knew plastic, specifically plastic recycling, wasn't going to work. No. It's and not, so yeah. much. And like I haven't done the research yet on the plastic episode, but so much of it goes straight into the landfill. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and it's just the American public is like, oh, well, number one, the, the companies that are producing the plastic should be in charge of recycling it. Period. Yeah, like they used to be. They used yeah. to be responsible for making sure that all of those glass Coke bottles weren't littering the beaches. And right. now it's like they basically sold us a bag bag of goods. Is that bag a of trash? Yeah, bag of bag of freaking trash. Literally a bag of trash. Um, and it really like shit really hit the fan in 2018 when we used to before then. Basically, China decided in 2018 that they didn't want to accept most of our recyclables a lot of plastic mm -hmm. but because we as americans were so bad at recycling because i think we just have this idea that anything's recyclable throw yeah. it all in mm -hmm. and we were sending them our garbage like it wasn't right i understand why china did it but they basically they didn't necessarily ban imports of recycling from the u.s but it feels like a ban because i think it dropped from like 90 percent to 10 percent wow so yeah we ran into this issue where we still haven't really solved it. And it's like, we don't have anywhere to send this stuff. And it basically turned from a profitable industry into a not profitable industry. Yeah, yeah the opposite. An expensive. Expense, an expense on yeah. communities. Yeah. So it's it's pretty wild. 
Wow. And yeah, we're kind of in this wild west of we don't really have all the solutions yet. But yeah. but yeah, so that's why we wanted to look into recycling because it's like everybody, everybody thinks that it's the right thing to do, that mm-hmm. it's good, mm-hmm. that it's a solution, that it's like way better for the environment, that it's, yeah. If you don't do it, you're evil. Yeah. And somebody's taking care of it. Yep. You know? Yes. That's yeah. the big thing. It's like, um, yeah, just this out of Starbucks out of cup is yeah. definitely going to be recycled. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. it's like, probably not. Yeah. And plastic doesn't go away. No, so. it's eternal. Plastic is forever. More than diamonds. Plastic is forever. More than diamonds. <laughs> Tell the beers. Coming yeah, for that, should, that should be like the Society of Plastics slogan. <laughs> Plastic More than diamonds. Huh. But anyway... On to aluminum, we were chatting a little bit, and it seems like some recyclables are okay, and yeah. I'm hoping aluminum is one of them. Yeah, so I'm going to take you on a ride about our sparkle yes. pony, aluminum. So first, I just want to go through my billion sources here. Yes. I started with the aluminum leader, what is aluminum. Uh, they also have how is aluminum produced. Uh, then I went to Gabrian, which has it an article about how you pronounce aluminum. Is it aluminum or aluminium? Learn about the metal's fascinating spelling history. That's their actual article. And only in it, you know. funny. Well, it depends where you live, right? Yeah. Well. Okay. Well. Oh. Wait a minute. Okay. Then um, (laughs) Green Citizen is aluminum foil recyclable, which I believe you found. And then um, a little article from Better Meets Reality is how much aluminum is left in the world, will we run out, and what happens if we do, which is really just a bunch of aggregated articles from other places. The Week had a YouTube video about why we will never run out of aluminum. I hate to do spoilers here. (laughs) Green Tumble is how is aluminum recycled, the recycling process. The Recycling Partnership had an article about a recycling initiative that captures 4.1 million new pounds of aluminum annually, annually, which I didn't get into too much, but I thought it was an interesting piece. Uh, Republic Services has an article on two things you should always recycle to help the planet with some interesting statistics. Now we get into kind of the, the deep dive here. Studies on the impact of bauxite mining activities on the environment of Kolhapur district in India. Uh, that's a research article. We had an article from the Columbia Climate School State of the Planet Project drives sustainability commitments from Guinea's bauxite mining industry. Then the Institute of Physics had processing red mud as a factor of removing the risk of environmental disasters. So I'm I'm telling you what direction this article is going. Right. And then Tamra had a thing about bottle bills, bottle bill states and how they work. The Seattle PI had an article on environmental problems associated with the recycling aluminum. And then Oberk had a really great article about which states are the best or worst for recycling. Oh, wow. That's interesting. You might want to see as well, I think. Yeah. Some details about aluminum. We're going to go into people in the UK call it aluminium because a bunch of British chemists in the 19th century thought it sounded more classical. That's it. They just liked because when they were naming it, the the British chemists were like aluminium and the Americans were like aluminum. And so that's why. That's it. So... So typical. No, just kidding. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can read the fascinating history from Gabian, but uh, that's not why we're here, right? Right. So aluminum is an element. It was discovered in the 1824. So it's the 13th. It's number 13 on the periodic table. It's a metal, as you know. It's the most widespread metal on the planet. Uh, it makes up 8% of the Earth's core mass, according to aluminum leader. So that's a lot. That is a lot. Uh, but it doesn't occur naturally in its pure form because it binds too easily with other elements. So in order to get pure aluminum, you have to process it. Uh, And this is done using electricity. So there was no aluminum before there was electricity. So you can thank Tesla and uh, Edison for that. Right. That historic feud. Yeah. (laughs) We're not going to take science. But yeah, but go Tesla. (laughs) The first time anyone produced pure aluminum was in 1824, but it wasn't, they didn't create an industrial process for it until after 1870. So um, it's known for being lightweight, durable, easy to process, and it's resistant to corrosion. It also doesn't catch fire and it's not toxic like other metals. So it's kind of an ideal material. Catch fire? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't know what metals catch fire. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. Um, it doesn't conduct electricity unless it's combined with other elements so 
Um, if you combine aluminum with other elements, you can make all sorts of stuff like the wires in your phone. Uh, they say it could replace copper. They also make alloy aluminum alloy wheels for your car. They make engine parts from it. Uh, automobiles and airplanes are all like everything around you is built from aluminum on some level. You've probably seen aluminum doors. You've seen aluminum ladders. They're usually aluminum alloys because pure aluminum will be a little bit too lightweight for those things. But there's aluminum okay. everywhere. Hmm. Okay. So uh, the most common form of aluminum that occurs naturally is aluminum sulfate. And that's used as a chemical to clean water, to cook. They put it in medicine and cosmetics. But for our purposes today, we're going to talk about pure aluminum that the, the quote unquote tin foil uses is actually aluminum foil and your household cans. Okay. Okay. So again, I'll go into the process of how you make aluminum later, but most of this aluminum comes from an ore called bauxite ore. Okay. A big statistic, if you just Google aluminum recycling um, or just aluminum in general, every article will say 75% of the aluminum that has ever been produced since 1880 is still in use today. <gasps> what? Amazing. Yeah. That Bud Light you were drinking? probably made up partially of aluminum a, that was mined and created and yeah oh I'm, I, am. I was thinking it was made into my next bud light but yeah yeah well that too but i don't, I don't even like bud light <laughs> the bud light i know i don't drink bud light either but it's just you know it's a, it's a can <laughs> the lacroix the, the LaCroix, lacroix that you're drinking yeah right <laughs> now we have to go into the sustainability of all of oh, these Lord. drinks we're drinking the one thing i want to point out here is don't be confused you would think that would mean that 75 percent of aluminum is recycled but that's not a fair statistic it's just 75 percent of the aluminum that has ever been created since it was started in 1874 or whenever is still in production today so but that's okay. not from recycling well, it is from recycling, but that doesn't mean that 75% of all aluminum is recycled. Oh, okay. There, that's hmm. a false statistic there. They're okay. not uh, correlated. Correlated? Correlation. There's no correlation necessarily. Yeah. It sounds right to me. Recycling aluminum, it's one of the most recyclable materials on the planet. Okay. It doesn't break down during the process. It's a pretty straightforward process. You sort it, first of all, right? You shred it. You clean it. You melt it down. Remove any byproducts, so anything else that shows up in it. Uh, you create an alloy, and then you compound it. This is done, actually, you know, we were talking about China takes most of our plastic, or used to. There's a lot of recycling actually done in the United States. It's a simple enough process that they can do it in the United States. Okay. Do they have to do anything to get, like, the colors off the aluminum? That would be removing the byproducts. Okay. Yeah, the paint and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Aluminum recycling rates in 2018, which is the most recent data well, that I found from the EPA, they said 3.9 million tons of aluminum were produced, including 1.9 million tons of aluminum containers and packaging, and then 2 million tons of durable and non-durable goods. That would be like your wheels and your ladders. and whatever. So the total recycling rate of aluminum containers and packaging, so that's your Bud Light cans and your food containers and your tin foil, or excuse me, aluminum foil, was 34.9%, 35%. That's pretty low. Yeah. But if you just look at beer and soft drink cans, we recycle those at 50.4%. Hmm. But that still means that in 2018, 2.7 million tons of aluminum went to the landfill. I was going to say that's still low, like 50%. Yeah. yeah. And it, there may be reasons for that. Okay. But. Interesting. I, I was like one out of every. Some, some places said that 65% of aluminum is recycled. So that that's apparently, so Green Tumble stated that, and that was 67% of aluminum cans in the world. So two out of three worldwide, which means, you know, probably Holland is doing a lot better job than we are. Uh, generally they do. Europe in general re yeah. recycles a lot more than we do. So whatever the reasons are for that, only 50% of our soda cans are recycled in the U.S. Step up your game. Yeah, especially if it actually functions. Yeah. Like if the system works. Yeah. Then we wanted to get into why you might not want to recycle aluminum. Okay. So first of all, as with any manufacturing process in the United States, aluminum recycling can also cause environmental issues. Okay. According to Seattle PI, this can include there's toxic melted waste. There's a toxic cake that 
is created by the recycling process that's made of, of salt that and disposing of it is difficult and toxic. Uh, there's also the burning of fossil fuels to run the machines and the electricity needed to do that. And then, of course, air pollution from melting the aluminum down. Those are all reasons why you might not want to recycle aluminum. Right. Okay. I'm curious to see how it stacks up against... Well, I'll keep going. New, yeah. Okay, another reason you might not recycle aluminum is it's really difficult for recycling facilities to separate out clean aluminum from dirty aluminum. So it's really easy for it to get classified as contaminated by the recycling facility during pre-sorting. And if they call it contaminated, it's going to get thrown in the trash anyway. Dirty aluminum can't be recycled. And, and we're talking about your lasagna topper when you're baking and it's got cheese and grease in it. That stuff can't be recycled. It gums up the works. Also, you can rinse that before you throw it in the recycling bin. You can clean aluminum foil before you toss it. But if it's got grease on it, I mean, in general, just everybody knows oil and grease is not allowed in recycling. So your pizza boxes also, I'm sure you're going to talk about that, but like, yeah. we talked about it, glass bottles that had essential oils in them can't be recycled because of the oil, right? Right. So just know that you have to throw it away if you can't scrub it down. Also, it needs the aluminum should be separated from any other recyclable or trash materials. So for instance, you know, sometimes you get those food containers that are aluminum foil and then on the top they have like a paper that's got like aluminum. Yeah. You probably can't separate the paper from the aluminum in that. So you're just going to have to throw it away. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. yeah, that topper right there, if it's combined with something. If you, if it comes attached to plastic and you can safely remove the plastic from the aluminum, then you can recycle the aluminum if it's clean. Again, no baked right. on lasagna. But otherwise, it's just going to get tossed out anyway. Another thing to note, um, if, you, if you do want to recycle your tinfoil, crunch it up. It may seem like you want it to be as pristine as possible, but they said that the sheets get caught up in the recycling turnstiles and things and so it's better to have it crumpled up oh which is probably also why you want to crush your cans oh uh, do you crush your cans i do you well do. i do when i'm when i'm out with the hash house harriers i crush my cans when That's i'm really... at home i don't okay my grandma used to and it was like she got well she actually did the smart thing and crushed like gallons and gallons and gallons of you know bags full yeah. And took it to the recycling center and got money for yeah. it. Well, and I that's, think it was like a couple cents per can. Yeah, that's what I'm going to talk about that in a minute too. Oh, so, but that, those would be reasons why you don't recycle aluminum. Is I mean, personally, from your own house, if it's dirty, just don't do it. But also because it does, there are environmental issues uh, with the recycling process. Um, it's something to be aware of. But okay, why should you recycle aluminum? Number one. It's actually better for the environment than making new aluminum. Okay. This is what I assumed. Yes. The process of extracting pure aluminum from ore is extremely energy intensive. I mean, there's a lot of other aspects that go into it. So number one, you have to mine the bauxite. So that usually occurs in tropical and subtropical areas. That's where most of the bauxite is. Okay. Or China. Um, according to Aluminum Leader, 73% of bauxite is found in five countries in the world, including Jamaica, Guinea, Brazil, Australia, and India. Whoa. Now, mining, it's, it's all a pit mine. So there's concerns about deforestation, water contamination, and of course, human rights violations. Right. A lot of the mining that is done in Vernitz, I, I believe a lot of places said that Guinea has the largest concentration of bauxite ore in the world. But it's usually outside companies that come and do the mining, and they don't actually help the local community very much. Well, yeah. Uh, There's that. Uh, from there, the bauxite ore has to be processed into alumina, which is a white powder, to create aluminum. This takes whoa. very- Yeah, yeah. That blows my mind. Yeah. Well, it takes uh, very high temperatures, and then they have to also use a concentrated toxic soda. And this creates something called red mud which, according to the Institute of Physics, is toxic to humans and the environment because it's extremely corrosive. Okay. So it, it, they use a toxic corrosion chemical in very high temperatures to separate the alumina from the bauxite. And it's a process that goes back and forth several times. So then you have to dispose of the red mud properly in a mud disposal area, which means more land, 
And you have to make sure that the mud disposal areas won't allow the alkali, so the corrosive elements, to get into groundwater. So you have to very much trust that the industry that's doing this is following all the procedures. And in certain deregulated areas where perhaps all of this is taking place, that might not be so. Wow. But apparently, if it's done properly, aluminum leader says the red mud can be reused as a raw material because the bauxite turns into different components and you can get those out of the red mud later. Also, these mud areas can be reclaimed once they're full by burying the red mud in sand, ash, or dirt, and then planting trees and plants growing on top of it. Okay. But still, it's a toxic byproduct. Seep down into the water. Yeah. It's, there's but, a concern. Right. Yeah. Well, and then finally, you've got to have another element, cryolite, to make the right environment for the electrolysis that it takes to make aluminum. It's a rare natural fluoride mineral. They've started making it artificially. I didn't go very deep into the process of how, if that's sustainable or not, but it's another environmental impact there is this other element that you have to use. Well, I don't think cryolite is an element. It's a mineral. A thing. A fluoride mineral. There we go. Okay. <laughs> it's a thing. But yeah, it's a thing. And then also, again, high amounts of electricity to create the aluminum from the alumina. These things always make me wonder who the hell did this first. Dude, scientists in the 19th century were just running around like crazy. Like, if you look, they're, they're just like, let's set something on fire. I mean, like, oh, this is radioactive. Let me keep it in my bedroom just to yeah. see what happens. Keep they it on they my were pillow. just screwing around. And I mean, it was a great time for science, but it was also like, right. wow, you're losing what? your teeth and your hair, Marie Curie. <laughs> you know? That's horrible. You got to think. It's but so electricity true. was so exciting, you know? You're right. Let's turn this white powder into a shiny metal. metal. <laughs> yeah. And call it aluminum. No, aluminum, aluminum, aluminum. <laughs> you know, it was like just the Wild West. I mean, literally, that's wow. when the Wild West was. So, right. Yeah. yeah. And they definitely didn't have, you know, protective eyewear. <laughs> right. This is why those things exist, though. It's our four forefathers and foremothers walked so we could run without <laughs> there scissors. Go. There you go. But yeah. Okay, so there you go. According to Republic Services, recycling aluminum takes 95% less energy than making new cans from raw materials. Whoa, that's huge. That's a pretty big sustainability thing. Also, another reason you want to recycle it. Aluminum is infinitely recyclable. You can recycle it for the next billion years if we do that. It doesn't break down during the process. And again, that, that can of LaCroix you're drinking probably contains aluminum that was created in 1880. Probably. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. It's weird to think about that it is it's this product that is so integral in our lives and it's only existed for two hundred and fifty years. I know. It's like what the heck did people drink out of on oh the go God. before? <laughs> yeah. Your wooden cup, right? It's just leaking all over you. Coconut shells. <laughs> wow. Couldn't even have had carbonation, you know, you had to carbonate on the premises, right? You couldn't you couldn't yeah, have or carbonated with beer. You couldn't even have LaCroix. No. What was life like? <laughs> it's just the worst. <laughs> Sounds horrible. Wow. Okay. So there you go. But another reason, and you just touched on this, basically every state in the US offers some form of aluminum recycling. Okay. You may have to bring it in yourself, but most places have because it's so easy, it's localized, they have the programs in place. But as you were talking about, bottle bills, which are state laws that require uh, recycling facilities to pay people when they bring back certain recyclable goods, you can make money off of it. 10 states have bottle bills currently. You can get cash for cans in California, Connecticut, Hawaii, Iowa, Maine, Massachusetts, Michigan, New York, Oregon, and Vermont. Oh, so they used to do it in Indiana because my grandma yeah. did. That's yeah, a lot so of places got rid of it, but... According to Oberk, the state that recycles the most aluminum cans is Michigan. I don't know if that's because they drink the most beer or what, but they recycle the most cans and they get money for it. So. Okay. Now, another reason some, this is back and forth, the scare factor is that there's some concern that we could run out of bauxite ore to make new aluminum within the next 80 years. But most scientists think there are, another, there are enough other sources of aluminum that we would figure out how to get it out of there. Because again, it makes up 8% of the Earth's core mass. So 
probably we're not going to run out of aluminum anytime soon. It's just we're going to refine new processes to make it hopefully more efficient, you know. Less miney. Less, yeah, we'll see. We're just going to take it out of the air. Just kidding. It's oh, not there you air. go. There's no aluminum in the air. Yeah, but you said it likes to cling to other things, right? So. Yeah, it's there's so many aluminum, alum, alum, aluminum, <laughs> alloys aluminum. and combinations in the world that, yeah, we have lots of options, apparently. Okay. As always, we're going to say, when you think about your concerns with aluminum production and secondary aluminum, which is recycling, those all cause environmental concerns. So use it as sparingly as you can and reuse it. Some of the ideas that the Green Citizen said were that you can, you know, obviously rinse it, wash it, reuse it. You can also bunch it up and use it to scrub your dishes. Oh, the aluminum foil? Yeah. Oh, it's a reusable sponge. <laughs> yeah, I was like, it's probably less less gross than a reusable sponge, right? Whoa, interesting. I wonder how long that would last. It seems like it would fall apart pretty quickly. But... Yeah, I wonder. But you can also use it to polish your silverware. I mean, there's all kinds of uses for aluminum foil. I know people throw it in their dishwasher and supposedly it polishes their silverware. Well yeah, yeah. there's some interaction that happens. You can like put a piece of aluminum foil in a thing of water and add, I forget, baking soda or something and leave your silver in it and it'll remove the, um, what you call it, the green or what oxidation oh, yeah. from your mm -hmm. silver. So that's something. Oh, cool. I think I've heard that before. I think I tried that on my like stuff. I tried it once too and it didn't actually really. silver. Oh, and yeah. It just, it just peeled off the, the out layer. I was like, God dang it. And then you broke up with whatever boy bought it for you. I did. Good. Anyway, but yeah, America, put down that Bud Light, pour it out, rinse it out, throw it in your recycling can. In your re recycling can. <laughs> recycling bin, sorry. No, cans. No. Recycle the cans. And can, can, can. Can, 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 can. Can, can. cans, recycle, yeah. Yep. You can, can, recycle can, cans. Yeah, so my question is like, you might not have the answer to this, but a lot of people say they try to come up with strategies for like wasting less water while they're rinsing off their recyclables, mm, mm -hmm. especially if you say it's like not even going to do anything. Like it sounds like if I wanted to recycle a lasagna tray, I'd really have to scrub it. And that might not be like, is that, I wonder if that's worth the water right. wasted. Well, that's what Green Citizen was saying. If you're already washing dishes and you're doing the two pan method that we talk about, you know, you might as well, you can wash it there too. Okay. Um, and it, that might be worth it if you're already right. washing. I mean, like my grandmother's lasagna pan, I'm already washing that. So why not wash the aluminum foil I put on top of it? Right. Yeah. I can wash it. Oh, together. so you actually wash your aluminum foil? No, this is, ladies and gentlemen, Emmett has poked his head in the door. <laughs> hey, dog. He's decided he doesn't. He doesn't want – he just wants the door open. Anyway, okay, we're going to leave it open until something crashes in the kitchen. Anyway, okay. <laughs> he just He's lying between my room and my roommate's room so he can watch both of us. But my roommate has his door closed. And I oh, have closed. he's a sad boy. And he's so See, lonely. That's why I'm in the basement. I only have spiders to bother. Oh, yeah, you're friendly spiders. No ruby for us to play with. No, it's but, for the best. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I use – my grandmother's lasagna pan is like a old cast iron thing. So okay. I wash that. And then why not wash the lasagna topper, you know, while I'm at it? I can scrub that. And But again, there are other things you can use instead of aluminum foil for your lasagna. There's, you know, reusable method things you can use. Is there? Yes. And I don't have them in here, but um, I need to look Oh, them no, up. that's fine. I yeah, mean. Yeah. There's like paper... Not paper because that would catch on fire. But there's 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 reusable. You can do parchment paper, but I don't know if that's any better. Yeah, it won't be as good as aluminum because that keeps no. it. Down. But you can use a lid, you know, like a pan lid. They make them. Okay, so, that's interesting. Oh yeah, because some are covered or like glass. a Dutch oven. Yeah, like a Dutch oven. Hmm. And then you just yeah. So look into those methods. Yeah. But yeah. That's so aluminum. That yeah. is very interesting. Thank yeah. you. Well, now we must rate it on our granola system. Oh, my goodness. So if we're talking about aluminum recycling, not aluminum itself. And again, our granola rating system, 
because there were a couple of dirty hippies, is on a scale of one to five granolas, with one being soggy and five being break your tooth off because the crunchier the better. I would give this aluminum recycling, and it's the first one that we're doing of the season, it's either a four or a five. It's either crunchy or break your tooth off. I say crunchy again because there are other concerns with uh, the environmental aspects of the process of recycling aluminum that are problematic. Yeah, but the alternative. Right. It's so easy to recycle. Uh, yeah. And, and better than creating new aluminum. So And it's so easy to do. So I kind of want to give it a break your tooth off. Oh, that's so cool. I would agree with that. The only caveat would be does this system, even though it works well, incentivize people to use more than they would otherwise? And there's a question. And again, the same thing we were talking about with plastic. If you don't know that you can't throw dirty aluminum in the, you know, you're just going to gum up the works anyway. So it, does it just encourage people again out of sight, out of mind to use more trash? So yeah. that might be a four in that sense. It might be a crunchy. Okay. Yeah, let's just give it a crunchy because five should really be a what are our other fives? Can you remember? I think the only one I can think of is DIY laundry detergent. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't even give it to dish or to... Don't say dishwasher detergent. Not dish. No, <laughs> definitely not. Screw dishwasher <laughs> detergent, obviously. But we didn't even give it to glass cleaner. Oh, yeah, glass cleaner. That was a four? I think that was a four. We haven't ever done a three before. Oh, really? Let's find some threes. Yeah, I think we'll have some this season. But mm -hmm. yeah, update on my dishwasher... Dirty Labs, shout out to them. It's, is it working? It works really well. Oh wow! And it's more expensive than like making your making it yourself, but it also hmm, functions. So <laughs> actually, does its job. How yeah, nice. How and refreshing. I, I know. And I tried today the whole um, or last night. I tried no rinse, no pre rinsing, mm -hmm. and it worked. So because on yes. their packaging it says you don't have to pre rinse, and I was like, I don't believe it because I've been so screwed. But it actually did work, and I once a week will use like citric acid in my um because food grade citric acid works for hard water deposits, right? At least uh, works for me. Um, so like once a week I'll use it, maybe once every two weeks. But other than that, like things are good. Awesome. So I am a fan for life as long as I company is around i have to a friend of mine texted me the day before our dishwashing detergent one came out and uh i was like well i may have some recommendations for you but i need you to listen to the podcast tomorrow so I'm, i'll text him tomorrow and be like dirty labs dude because he was like i don't like these water spots on my dishwashing yes I like, yes i know Citric we acid. feel you man mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep awesome that's so great. well there you go aluminum recycling it works do it america do it Yay. better crunchy starting the crunchy. season off good yeah feels feels good i'm gonna go throw some beer cans in the trash oh not the oh. trash <laughs> the recycling not the trash not the trash <laughs> so uh what's up next week tiffany yeah i'm gonna be talking about paper recycling we're continuing with our four two horsemen and two these are the ponies. ponies these are the my little ponies <laughs> my the little recy ponies. recycle apocalypse recycle apocalypse <laughs> <Recycle> <laughs> Have you seen the robot chicken, My Little Pony, Apocalypse Pony? No. <laughs> I'll have to send you that. We might have to post it on Instagram too. Oh it's a my gosh. Good little... I love it. I'm pestilence. <laughs> I'm no. death. I'll have to show it to you. Anyway. Mm, well, that's definitely plastic. So mm -hmm. here we come. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're talking about paper. Paper recycling. So I'm excited. Yes. So that that's what's coming up. So... There's my Give, dog leave walking us? away. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, we're done here. <laughs> okay. Done with aluminum. If you like us, leave us a review. Five stars are great. That's we'll the take only anything. acceptable review. Right. If you stars. don't like us, don't leave a review. Yeah, please don't. Please. But uh, it, does, it does help other people find us. That's how the algorithm decides what to present to people. So yeah, rate us we, if you like us. We like being popular. So, so by the way. Hi, twin sister. Love you. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone else, for listening, too. And uh, we'll see you next week for paper. Yeah. Woo -woo. Bye, Tiff. Bye.